Hello everyone. Thank you for coming to Circle so nicely as always. You guys are still doing such a nice job of that. We appreciate you doing that. Um, check your body. Make sure you're sitting nicely. Your hands are where they're supposed to be. You're not touching your face or anybody around you. Thank you. So Miss Amy did a wonderful rock painting on one of her circles. Did you see that? It's pretty cool, isn't it? And it reminded me of this book that Miss Giesler bought for the school, but I don't think we ever had a chance to read. It's called Scribble Stones. So settle in, and we're going to read this book before our quiet minute. Um, the person who wrote the book, the author, and the illustrator who drew the pictures are the same person, and her name is Diane Alber. So author and illustrator. I think that's pretty cool as someone who's talented enough to be able to write and draw pictures. So, this is the story about one happy stone who was gray and round and rarely alone. He lived with the others all stacked in a pile and waited calmly with a large, friendly smile. Each stone had a purpose, but it wasn't known yet. Some would be landscaping and some a pet. There were so many things that, that, that stones could be. The hardest part was just waiting to see. Stone knew that his purpose would brighten someone's day. He just wasn't sure how or in what kind of way. He imagined the things he might soon become as he watched all the stones get picked up one by one. But his happy face slowly turned to a frown as he watched the tall pile start to dwindle on down. And although he was worried, he tried not to care until it was clear he was the last one there. Then finally it happened. Stone was quickly picked up. He was placed on a desk next to a very large cup. As Stone looked around, he thought, this is so great. But soon he discovered he was a dull paperweight. That's what you use to hold papers down so they don't blow away in the wind. I'm supposed to bring happiness, not hold papers, papers still. There must be a mistake. This just can't be my skill. Then all of a sudden, a splatter flew high, and then some bright scribbles came wiggling by. They were headed right toward the short paper stack, and they filled up the paper on the front and the back. Those great scribbles coming on through. They were all making art. It was happening so fast. Stone feared that the paper would simply not last. There's a bunch of them. He couldn't believe just how much the pile grew. Then he heard a small cry from the fun splatter crew. We knew this pile was getting too tall. There is no more paper. We have used it all. The scribbles all cried. Now they saw it too. This is a disaster. What will we do? Big stack of papers. Stone didn't want the scribbles to cry, so he thought of something they could all try. He slowly rolled down the very large pile and said, I know how to make you all smile. I know I'm not paper, but I like art too. Do you think you could spare some red, yellow, and blue? They love 
the idea and could not wait to start, Scribble began making a happiness heart. Splatter then painted some pale baby blue. Another Scribble added a sunny gold hue. It didn't take long before more stones showed up, and soon the line grew behind the large red cup. To Stone's surprise, he was picked up once more. He had never heard of this happening before. More art was added and he was on his way to become a small gift to brighten someone's day. Nearby, another stone's journey had begun. He was spreading such happiness and having great fun. Every time he traveled, someone added their part. Sometimes just a scribble, sometimes fancy art. With each new layer, there was a story to share, and soon Scribble Stones were seen everywhere. They traveled the planet. It was quite an event, bringing happiness and fun wherever they went. There they are. Looks like North America. Now, thousands of stones inspire creativity each day all because of a paperweight with a will and a way. And there's our paperweight. The end. Let's take a quiet minute and I want you to think about how you would decorate a stone if you were to paint one on your own. If you didn't already with Miss Amy. Very nice. Did you think about how you would decorate a stone? I actually have a stone here. Um, like they mentioned in our story, some stones are used for landscaping. That's for decorating outside. Um, in my backyard, we actually have a whole patch of stones. That is where I got this. They're very similar in size and color and shape for they're just decorative stones. And um, as we're doing our landscaping, we're actually doing, making a lot of changes in our garden this year. So we're taking out all these rocks. So I have a bunch of them and I want to paint one. And I think I actually want to make it kind of look like the stone in our story. So I have my newspaper mat, of course, and my stone. Um, I have these cool paint pens. They're pens that have uh, ink in paint inside of them, and it really lasts a long time, so I don't have to put anything over the top. And I use these for a lot of different projects around my house and arts and crafts that I do. So I'm going to be using these. Um, for you at home, try different materials. You can try markers, you can try acrylic paints, have fun, experiment. Um, 
if your mom or dad look up on the internet how to or which materials to use, you may find a better solution. So use what you have, though. Have fun. You may just need to keep the rocks inside if you use markers so they don't get rained on. We'll see. Anyway, so I again, I want to make my stone look kind of like one of these guys. So I'm going to start with white for the eyeballs. And I need a little scrap of paper for this, that these pens, you have to shake them. Oh, Sharpie markers actually work really well too, if you have those. And then for these markers, you have to push down on the tip. So that way the ink comes out. So I did that. Okay, I think, yeah, this way. So I'm gonna give him two eyes. very important with these that you close them when you're finished. There we go. Two little eyes. I want the paint to dry. Um, now I'm going to use a black marker, black paint pen. Get the juices flowing. There we go. And I'm going to trace around his eyes so you can see them a little bit better. The dots, the black part in the middle of your eye is called the pupil. So I'm going to give him two little pupils. Boop. Boop. Oh. Try to make them the same size. And of course he needs a mouth. Hmm. Got all these different mouth options. I think I'm gonna give him a smile though because I like happy rocks. I'm gonna give him a couple little eyebrows too just for some personality. <laughs> there we go. There's my rock. I like him. Have you ever heard of a pet rock? Is that really a thing? Because they said some people have stones as pets. I think that's a little bit strange. But you know what? When I was a little girl, I did have a pet rock. Isn't that silly? Because, you know, pets are a lot of work. You have to feed them. You have to give them shelter. You have to clean up after them. And some people in your house may be allergic to dogs or cats, so you can't have one. But pet rocks, super easy. Very low maintenance. They don't eat very often. You don't have to feed them too much. Um, they kind of like being alone sometimes, so you don't have to take them for walks. You can just kind of leave them for a day or two and they'll be okay. But they really, you know what pet rocks really like? Music. Do you know what kind of music? Rock and roll! <laughs> I know, it's silly. So, I have my pet rock. What do you think? Shall we make him a habitat? Let's do that. So, um, oh, first we need to name our rock. I'm going to name mine... Simon. And the reason I'm picking Simon is because there's a very famous song and it's one of my most favorite songs and it's called I Am a Rock. Isn't that a great name for a song? And it's written by someone named Paul Simon. Very famous singer. So this is Simon. Let's give him a home. You stay right there, bud. Can you guys see him? All right, let's see here. Um, rocks, they don't wander very far from their homes. So that's pretty cool. So you don't have to have like a big enclosure so he can't run away. So I'm actually just going to use this box 
that I have right here. So I've already taped up the bottom and I think I'm going to cut these flaps off. Um, when you do this at home, you will definitely want to have a grown up help you because we're going to be using some sharp scissors and cardboard is pretty tricky to cut through. So you definitely want to have a grown up help you. Recycling. 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 <laughs> Oof. There we go. Now we have a nice little habitat for Simon. What do all living things need though? They need sunlight, air, nutrients, food and water and shelter. Good. So we have shelter. How about we have sunlight that's going to come in naturally, air, food and water. What do rocks eat? Pet rocks like sand. Did you know that? Um, so I have here, this is a case for contacts, which are things you put in your eyes so you don't have to wear glasses. I tried contacts, they did not work. So this is a contact case that I do not use for contacts. You may not have one of these in your home. That's okay too. Um, if your mom or dad wears contacts and have one of these, you must ask if you can have it. Do not take it because it's very important for your mom or dad or whoever uses them. So I have just thought that it actually makes such a nice little food dish, food and water, just kind of like a dog bowl. So in one side, I've got some sand. I'm gonna dribble a little bit in there. I should do it up here. A little bit of sand and on the other side, a little bit of water. There we go. Now Simon has food and water. Where is he? There we go. So that's a nice basic habitat for your pet rock. Do you think do you think maybe he'd like to have a soft bed? Let's make him a little bed, shall we? I'm going to set this up here. And Simon, I need you. Let's see. I have, ooh, I have this nice little box that jewelry came in. It has this wonderful, soft, fluffy layer. Oops. And let's see. Oh. Doesn't that just make a lovely bed? Oh, that looks so, so nice. You know, let's make it a little bit more comfortable for him, don't you think? All right, let's see here. I have some fabric pieces left over from projects I've done. Let's see. Ooh. This is a nice soft felt. Let's see. I'm actually going to move this so that you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm just going to take this and fold that over. I need some scissors. I'm going to make this smaller. If you have any uh, fabric scraps, little pieces of fabric left over, that's another fun thing that you can make projects with. But again, make sure you ask your mom or dad before you take them because they may already have plans. So I'm just gonna fold that over and make a nice soft little mattress. What do you think, Simon? Ooh, and a little blanket too, you think? Or pillow? I'll just roll up some of this for a pillow, I think.
Mm -hmm. Ooh, that looks cozy. I would sleep in this bed. And then I think he needs a blanket. You're right. Let me see if I have a little bit of a bigger piece. Do you think that rocks would like to be burritoed like our nappers do? Let's see. Oh! He's a little rock nap burrito. <laughs> there we go. All tucked in. You can decorate the outside of his house too if you'd like. I think I'm going to add a window so he gets more sunshine. Because... I'm going to take this out for now. Simon has been an outside rock his whole life. So now that he's moving inside, it's going to, he needs some more air, some more light. So I'm using a very sharp knife here to cut into my cardboard box. So this is another reason why you want a grown up to help you. Um, I'm going to draw my window first on the outside so I know where I'm cutting. It's kind of a little bit hard to do on this because of the plastic tape, but that's okay. We're just getting an idea. I'm going to give him two windows so he gets some nice cross flow of air in these nice hot summer months. And There we go. Now you can get some sunshine. Let me close this up before we go too far. All right. What else do you think we can put in here to decorate his home? You can always just draw on it if you want to do that. I think I have this fun kind of cardboard paper that came from a box of something. But because of this fun pattern, I think it would make really fun wallpaper. You have wallpaper in your home? Yeah, some. I have some here in my special room. It came with the house and it kind of looks like a painting. It's on the wall over there where you can't see it, but I love it. It's just a nice way to add some pizzazz, if you will, to a space. I'm just measuring out here and then you'll want to cut this I'm going to use a paper cutter because it's going to go so much faster for me this is a tool that I use a lot ready boom one slide and we're done All right, put that way. And so now I have it. Does it fit? Oh, too big. It's better to be too big so you can cut down than to be too small because you can't cut up. Let's just take a little bit off. See that fun little strip? Recycling. Okay. And yes. I'm going to figure out where I want it and make my some nice corners and this is your the habitat you're making for your pet rock so you can make it look however you would like maybe you want to paint the inside 
or leave it blank. Maybe your rock likes to live a simple life. It doesn't want any frills or frazzles around. Because really, all your rock absolutely needs to survive is food, shelter, air, and sun. Very nice. All right. So I've got it kind of stuck in there. Um, before I glue it in, I'm going to cut out my window holes. So I'm just going to trace so I know where to cut. What other things do you think um, your pet rock would like to have decorating its home? Maybe a picture? A plant! Wouldn't that be lovely? Do you have plants in your home? I have a lot of plants. Um, I'm not sure how it happens, but we just kind of seem to collect them in our lives. So my husband and I, we have a lot of plants in our home and we love them because they just bring so much life and greenery to our home. Here's one window cut out. And one. Especially with these sharp things, you really need to make sure that you put your lids back on. All right, I'm gonna use a glue stick for this part. Like that. And, ooh, lots of glue for that wallpaper. And let's get our wallpaper in. And my wallpaper is longer in my side, so I'm just going to cut that off. Both sides. Don't cut your hair. Chelsea, don't cut your hair. All right. Man, this is quite fancy. Nice little home there. All right. Um, did you say we should have a picture? I have a little tiny framed picture of a horse. I'm just going to tape it in. I think right at the back. Nice. Um, did you say a plant? We should have a plant? I think so too. I have these little teeny tiny pots. Again, something I use for crafting. And I've painted this one with those same paint markers, so it's a little bit more decorative. And I have a make-believe plant. This is not real. This is plastic. So I can just set that in there and look. You got a little plant. I think maybe Simon would like his plant in the back there by the window so I can get nice light too. Um, of course, he's going to make his bed before we go. 
Do you make your bed in the mornings? Let's sleep by the window. And he needs his food and water. And there is a pet rock habitat. So remember, with your pet rocks, if you decide that you want to have one in your life, you need to give them food. They like sand, that's their favorite. When they run out of sand, you can give them more, but it takes them a really long time to eat it. So don't worry if you don't see them eating it very much. Um, it needs light, it needs air, it has its shelter, and the most important thing for stone, for pet rocks, you have to sing to them. So make sure you sing to your pet rock at least once a week, if not more. And remember, they love rock and roll. So I hope you guys enjoy your new friends. Um, one thing that you can also do is give them stuff to do. I have a little mini skateboard that Simon can have. And I have here a warm fuzzy for a friend. So enjoy, have fun, make it a family project. Just making, I just love making things. I hope you enjoy it too. So good luck to you and your new friends. And we will see you next week. Miss you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.